The equation of motion of a particle executing simple harmonic motion is a plus 16 pi square x is equal to 0. Now in this equation, a is linear acceleration in meters per second square of the particle at displacement x in meters. Now the time period of this simple harmonic motion is 1 by 4, 1 by 2, 1 by 3 or 1 by 5 seconds. Now let me write the equation. a plus 16 pi square x is equal to 0. Now if we rearrange this equation, we will see a is equal to minus 16 pi square x. 16, 16 is 4 square. Let's do that. a is equal to minus 4 pi whole square x. Find it out. Okay. Now, can you recall any equation, any formula from simple harmonic motion that looks similar to this equation? a is equal to minus 4 pi square x. Try to recall all the formulas, all the equations from the chapter simple harmonic motion. There are not a lot of them. And this equation matches one of them. Can you? Or shall I write it? Let me write it. I think you have recalled already. Let me write it. a is equal to minus omega square x. Does it ring a bell? Yes? Okay. So a is equal to minus omega square x. And I think we can compare straight away these two equations. Right? Okay. Now, so a is equal to minus 16 pi square x. That means this is a is equal to minus 4 pi square x. And we have our general equation as a is equal to minus omega square x. From here, we can say that omega is equal to 4 pi. Yes or no? Yes? So, omega is equal to 4 pi. First of all, why do we need to find omega? Because we have to find the time period. And we know that omega is equal to 2 pi by time period. Yes, omega is the angular velocity. right? So, angular velocity is the, the angular displacement per unit time. If t is the time period, that means the angular displacement of 2 pi or 360 degrees has been done in a time period of t, capital T. Correct? That is why angular velocity is 2 pi by t. Hence, from here we can find the time period. So this is the funda. This is how we are thinking. This is our thought process. Okay? So 2 pi by t is equal to 4 pi. A 2 pi goes off 2 times with 4 pi. That is why t is equal to 1 by 2 seconds. Easy or not? Easy? Okay. So from here, time period is 1 by 2 seconds. And that is why our answer for this question is 1 by 2 seconds. And that is why which option is correct? Option B is the correct answer for this question. A stationary solid object weighing 3.5 kg falls from a height of 2000 meters on a snow at 0 degrees Celsius. Now the object comes to rest immediately after collision. Then the amount of ice melted is 250, 230, 200 or 275 grams. We have to assume that all the energy of this stone is used in melting ice. And latent heat of ice is 3.5 into 10 power 5 joules per kg. Okay. Now, we have read the question. Now let's picturize it. There is a stone at a height of, let's say, H. This stone falls on snow and it transfer energy to this stone that is why ice melts and it convert to liquid. The first question is at this position does the stone have any energy? Of course it has a potential energy of mgh right and this potential energy is converted to heat energy and that heat energy is utilized in melting of ice. This is the whole funda, right? Now, second question. What is the amount of heat required to convert ice to water? What is the formula? I'm talking about the formula. Do you remember that? Yes or no? It is H is equal to mass times latent heat of fusion. Correct? That means this potential energy of a stone is converted to this heat energy, 
which is utilized in melting of ice. Right? Okay. So where does our calculation brings us? We have to equate potential energy to this heat energy, mass times latent heat of fusion. Right? Now question says us that mass of stone is 3.5 kgs. It is at a height of 2000 meters. Right? And latent heat of fusion is 3.5 into 10 to the power 5 joules per kg. Okay. Now what is our equation? Our equation is MGH, potential energy of a stone, is equal to heat energy, M times L. Okay. M we have to figure out. What has been given in the problem? Mass of a stone is 3.5. G we can take as 10, height is 2000 meters is equal to M times latent heat of fusion is 3.5 into 10 power 5 joules per kg. Easy? Just have a look once more. Potential energy gets converted to heat energy and that heat energy converts ice to water. Okay? Now, let's do the cal calculations quickly. 3.5 cancels off. So, M is equal to 2000 into 10 by 10 to the power 5. Okay. And this reduces down to 0.2 kgs or 200 grams. Fine. Easy problem. Since we have reached the answer, let's check the options. 200 grams. Option C says 200 grams and that is why it is the correct answer for this question. A body of mass 1 kg begins to move under the action of a time dependent force F is equal to 2t i cap plus 3t square j cap newtons. We have to calculate the instantaneous power developed at time t. Instantaneous power is given by dot product of force and velocity. Right? We have been given mass and force, but we have to figure out velocity. Okay? So let's do that. P is equal to F dot V. The question says force is 2T I cap plus 3T square J cap. Let's write it. F is equal to 2T I cap plus 3T square J cap. Mass is given as 1 kg. This is all we have. All right. Now, first of all, let's figure out the acceleration. Acceleration will be force by mass. Correct? Correct. Force is 2t i cap plus 3t square j cap divided by 1. That is why this is equal to 2t i cap plus 3t square j cap. We have acceleration. We need to figure out velocity. What should we do? Integrate. Yes. V is equal to a dt. Okay. What is the equation for acceleration? 2t i cap plus 3t square j cap. 2t i cap plus 3t square j cap dt. Let's do it first. This is a problem of integration. So 2t dt plus 3t square dt. Here we have i cap and here we have j cap. What should be the integration of t? t to the power 1. So this will be t square by 2i cap plus 3. Integration of t square. It will be t cube by 3 j cap. 2 cancels off, 3 cancels off. And finally, t square i cap plus t cube j cap. This is our velocity equation. Now let's remove all this. We have done our calculations and we have got velocity, which is t square i cap plus t cube j cap. Let's write it separately. V is t square i cap plus t cube j cap. Now it's the time to calculate power. Power is f dot v. So p is equal to f. f is 2t i cap plus 3t square j cap dot t square i cap plus t cube j cap. I think now it's your turn to calculate the dot product. Easy? Okay, so let's do that. 
2 t dot t square this will be 2 t cube plus 3 t square into t cube this will be 3 t to the power 5 and what is the unit of power it is what I think I have made a mistake there should not be a vector sign above p here also p is equal to f dot v dot product is a scalar product right okay so 2 t cube plus 3 t to the power 5 what and I think this is our correct answer yes of course and since we have arrived at the answer let's check the options option c is the correct answer for this question phase difference between a particle at a compression and a particle at successive rare fraction is pi by 2 pi by 3 pi or pi by 4 all right first of all let's see the diagram we already know that between two successive compressions or between two successive rare fractions we have a distance of one wavelength lambda right now tell me what will be the distance between successive compression and rarefaction lambda by 2 right as you can see on your screen here we have two successive compressions right between two successive compression we have a distance of lambda but in between these two successive compression we have one rarefaction yes see at the bottom correct or not so if we are finding the distance between a compression and a rare fraction, the successive compression and rare fraction, it will be lambda by 2. Lambda by 2, right? Question is saying, what will be the phase difference between two particles which are at a position of compression and a successive rare fraction? Yes. The distance between them is lambda by 2. Now, if we draw a general wave like this, let's name O, A, B. This is lambda ob is lambda oa is lambda by 2 so if a particle is at o another particle is at a what will be the phase difference between them 180 degrees right or not this is 0 degree here we have pi by 2 at a the position is pi so if two particles have a distance of lambda by 2 between them, the phase difference will be 180 degrees. Similarly, in our question, between two compression, the distance is lambda, one wavelength. Between two successive compression and rarefaction, the distance is lambda by 2. So what will be the phase difference if these two particles are at compression and a successive rarefaction? Tell me. Obviously, pi, it will be 180 degrees right and that is why our answer is pi now on your screen you can see a formula 2 pi by lambda del x i know you have studied this formula easy to find out the answer of this question from this formula but if we know the concept if logically we can solve the question then why to use the formula if we can reach out to the answer with logic with concept with our analysis no need to use the formula Yes? Okay. Finally, which option is correct? Option C is the correct answer for this question. A tuning fork with a time period of 1 by 256 seconds produces a sound wave which has a separation between adjacent compression and rarefaction of 0.7 meters. Then the speed of sound is 250, 400, 310 or 358 meters per second. All right. So the time period is 1 by 256 seconds and the separation between adjacent compression and rarefaction, adjacent compression and rarefaction is 0.7 meters. Then we have to figure out the speed of sound. All right. So see the data carefully. Now let's picturize the question. We have a tuning fork. It is vibrating, producing a sound wave of time period 1 by 256 seconds. So if this is the time period, can we figure out frequency from here? Yes, because T is equal to 1 by F. So from here, F will be 256 hertz. Okay, one thing sorted. Now, another information in the question is, the distance between adjacent compression and rarefaction is 0.7 meters. We already know, 
that between two successive compressions or between two successive rarefaction, there is a distance of one wavelength. Right or wrong? Right. But between successive compression and rarefaction, we have a distance of lambda by 2. See on your screen. Lambda by 2, right? Question is saying that the, the distance between adjacent compression and rarefaction is 0.7 meters. So what the question is mentioning? Lambda by 2. So lambda by 2 is given as 0.7 meters and from here lambda will be 1.4 meters. Now what we have to calculate is speed of sound. Right? The formula is lambda is equal to V by F. So V will be lambda times F. Wavelength is 1.4 meters. Frequency is 256 hertz. Plug in the values, get the answer. Okay? All right. Let's do it quickly. V is equal to lambda is 1.4. Frequency is 256 hertz. And that is why your answer will be 358 meters per second. I know the answer. So I have written it quickly. I think you need to calculate it. You need to multiply. Okay? All right. So, the answer is 358 meters per second. This will be the speed of sound wave. And finally, which option is correct? Option D is the right answer for this question.